Any work we do is bound by nature to have both good and bad effects. Now both good and evil have a binding effect on our soul. To liberate oneself from these bondages, we have to perform our duties without any attachment to their after effects, as has been said time and again in the Bhagavad Gita. Now how do we stay unattached from our work? The foremost requisite to stay unattached from anything we do is to have a strong character. Like the tortoise in its shell cannot be brought out against its will, a man's inner forces should not come out against his will, come what may. A man who has absolute control over his sense organs is forever safe in any situation. He can do no evil. But a higher state than this good tendency is the desire or liberation. Once we have achieved this state, we can perform our duties without any attachment to their after effects. Another way of achieving this detachment from our work is to work through freedom, work through love. Love never comes until there is freedom. A slave in chains will work like a drudge. So, when we work for material benefits like slaves, there can be no love in us and our work is not true work. Every act of love brings true happiness. True love can never cause pain to the lover or the beloved. Suppose a man is in love with a woman. He wants her to sit near him and move at his bidding. He feels jealous and suspicious of her every move. He is a slave to her and wishes to have her as his slave. If she does not do what he wants, it brings him pain. That is not love. Love only brings bliss. If it does not, it is not love. Only when you have loved your near ones, the whole world and the universe in such a manner that there is no reaction of pain or jealousy, no selfish feeling, then you are in a fit state to be unattached. Attachment only comes when you expect something in return. In whatever you do, expect nothing in return. Do it like you're doing it for your children, in which everything given by you is free. The conduct of men is guided by two things, mercy and might. All men and women try to make the most of the powers they have. The exercise of might is the exercise of selfishness. Mercy, on the other hand, is heaven itself. To be good, we all have to be merciful. The idea of mercy and selfless charity can be put into practice by looking upon work as worship. Here we give up all the fruits of our work to the Lord. Thus, we have no right to expect anything from the work we do. Just as water cannot wet the lotus leaf, the selfless and unattached man may live in the very heart of a crowded and sinful city and yet he will not be touched by sin. The idea of work without any attachment cannot be explained without knowing self-sacrifice. Here is a little story. After the battle of Kurukshetra, the five Pandava brothers performed a great sacrifice and made large gifts to the poor. Everybody expressed their amazement and said never before had they seen such a sacrifice. But after the sacrifice came a little mongoose, half of whose body was golden and half was brown. He began to roll on the floor of the sacrificial hall. On getting up he said, you are all liars, this is no sacrifice. What? the people exclaimed. You say this is no sacrifice? Do you not know how money and jewels were poured out to the poor and everyone became rich and happy? This was the most wonderful sacrifice any man could have performed. But the mongoose had a completely different tale to tell. There was once a little village and in it dwelt a poor Brahmin with his wife, son and his son's wife. 
They were very poor and lived on small gifts made to them for preaching and teaching. There came in that land a three years famine and the poor Brahman suffered more than ever. At last, when the family had starved for days, the father brought home one morning some barley flour which he had been fortunate enough to obtain. He divided it into four parts, one for each member of the family. Just as they were about to eat, there was a knock on the door. The father opened it and there stood a guest. The Brahman welcomed the guest and set before him his own food in true Indian tradition. The guest quickly ate the little bit and said, I have been starving for ten days. This little bit of food has increased my hunger. The wife then insisted her husband to offer the guest her share. He ate it and said he was still burning with hunger. The Brahman's son gave up his portion, but the guest still remained unsatisfied. It was the turn of the daughter-in-law to give up her share. The guest ate that too, and having eaten sufficiently, he blessed them and took their leave. That night, those four people died of starvation. A few granules of the flour had fallen on the floor, and when I rolled my body on them, half of it became golden. From then on, I have been traveling all over the world, hoping to find another sacrifice like that, but nowhere have I found one. Nowhere else has the other half of my body turned into gold. That is why I say this is no sacrifice. That is the essence of selfless work, even at the point of death to help someone without asking questions. Never vaunt your gifts to the poor or expect their gratitude, but rather be grateful to them for giving you the occasion of practicing charity to them.